the Big 12 TV deal is officially done. That's the first thing that we need to cite here. Uh, But there's a lot of things that we can get into about what it all means. So let's first dig into the details, right? $2.28 billion, $380 million per year. That's $31.6 million per school. Uh, It's expected close to $50 million after we get all of the CFP, NCAA tournament money, etc. Once all that stuff gets done, it's going to be closer to $50 million per school. That is an increase. In that sense, Brett Yarmark was correct as far as saying that it was going to be an increase over what they had prior. Uh, It just kind of goes to show you exactly how much media rights for sports has gone through the roof, especially for college football, because it is the second highest rated sport in the country, maybe in the world, probably in the country. Uh, Soccer is right there, of course, uh, aside from the NFL. NFL is king. We all understand that, especially in the United States. This deal is, of course, with Fox and ESPN. So, something to pay attention to there. Uh, This deal is done before the Pac-12's deal gets done. So, that is certainly a mark in the favor of the Big 12, right? It ends before the SEC and the Big 10 deals are up. So, that will help as well. That's a massive, massive thing for, at least from from what I read. I'm hoping I've got that correct. But, it should be done before those deals are finished with the Big Ten and the SEC, which means they will be first to market next time. The other part about this, the Big 12 has a pro rata deal with ESPN in their new media contract, and it's only for P5 schools, right? So it's not you don't get an automatic adjustment for G5 schools. They're not going to expand with San Diego State. They're not going to bring in SMU. They're not bringing in Memphis, et cetera, right? They have got their group of schools locked in, And the deal is, you now have a grant of rights that goes through, I believe, 2030, maybe 2031, somewhere around there. Once that grant of rights uh, locks in, those schools are set. And not, not even once it goes in, they are locked in now. They have signed away their rights, tied them to the Big 12. And this is huge for the Big 12, for stability, for everything else, right? The change here is ESPN is now the prime shareholder, so all of the biggest Big 12 games going forward, uh, starting in the 2024 season, 2025, whatever it is, uh, once this deal begins, ESPN will be the spot where all of the biggest games go. You will not have the biggest game of the week in the Big 12 being on Fox or on FS1 or whatever. Uh, As you can see, like Texas at Kansas State this week is on uh, FS1 uh, because Fox chose that one, so... Something to pay attention to, of course, going forward. Uh, Texas Tech at TCU is on Big Fox this week. Of course, Big Noon Kick, etc. That's huge for those schools. What does it all mean for the Pac-12? Well, certainly, because this deal was done with Fox and ESPN, it means that there will be a streaming element for the Pac-12. That's a huge, huge situation there. Um, They're probably going to be signing with Amazon. That appears to be... Uh, the way that the tea leaves are blowing at this moment. But the good thing for the Pac-12, aside from, you know, yeah, you're, you may be last to market, but you are going to be able to get in on the streaming wave that Amazon and Apple and everybody else is trying to get in on. They want to be involved with live sports. They understand that's where viewers spend the most time watching. Uh, it's where you can keep people on an app or on uh, their televisions for longer. And you can toss in ads, you can do all kinds of things, especially, I'm sure that Amazon is going to put some kind of a gambling proponent, some kind of a click here if you want to buy team merch, you know, whatever. Uh, All of that stuff will be available on an Amazon app or Apple or whatever, right? Those things will happen. The good thing for the Pac-12 is that this Big 12 money, I don't think is enough to pull Pac-12 teams away from the Pac-12. I think that's the biggest thing here is the pro rata, and I've seen multiple things. If it's a P5 school, then that means that, you know, the school that comes in, whoever it may be, if it's just one or two or whatever, their share goes up the same as everybody else's. That's that's one thing that I've read. Another part of this contract that I've read is that actually it only goes up like 63%. I believe that was John Canzano. Either Canzano or Wilner said that. Um, that's, that's definitely something to pay attention to. Let me go on and bring up... 
uh, this good article over at uh, Black and Gold Banner uh, Banneret. So that's the UCF site over at SB Nation. And there's a lot of, you know, good stuff in here, right? All of this stuff was broken by uh, Marshand and uh, John Orand, right? Uh, this is, you know, the payout pie gets bigger by one slice is what the pro rata clause says here. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. So that sets up if a school decides to join, the value of the contract goes up by the per school amount, which is the payout pie gets bigger by one slice. Um, but you can also read here that, let's see, where is it? Da, 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 and I thought I saw it. Uh, but it, so Kenzano said something about it being only um, only 63%. Here we go. Uh, if they add a Power 5 member, they would only get 63%. The current members in the Pac-12 would have to take a haircut, and that helps the Pac-12. That's what Kenzano said. I I don't know which one is correct, right? And and we haven't seen the contract, so who knows what to make of that. But the way that it looks right now, because the grant of rights has been signed, etc., I don't believe that the Big 12 is going to be taking a Pac-12 school. So realignment, as far as the P5 level is concerned, appears to be done for quite some time right now. Um, with the Pac-12, that does help them out significantly as far as the fact that there's this pro rata clause, it helps the Pac-12 as far as their expansion efforts, right? And we see, of course, this was over at da, 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 Stanford Cardinal, uh, all Cardinal FN. So Fan Nation, uh, it's an SI.com site. It says Pac-12 and San Diego State have had ongoing communication. San Diego State widely considered to be the next Pac-12 school if expansion happens. It says there have been murmurs, whispers, or in some cases straight up yelling when people discuss the future of the Pac-12. Um... Now, we appear to be well past the belief of teams leaving for the Big Ten and the Big 12, etc. And it looks like the Pac-12 is moving into expansion. Uh, John Canzano is, of course, the one who reported this. And San Diego State is the one that's widely been considered as the surefire future member of the Pac-12. And I can understand it, right? The Huron Consulting Group is helping San Diego State make the jump to the Power 5. And the school itself did, however, decline to comment on the matter. Uh, this shouldn't come as a surprise for two reasons. The Pac-12 has already asserted that securing the conference's media rights deal is the main priority. Secondly, and more of just how things work in college football, not a single expansion move will happen publicly until it is all but done. And this is true. This is true. Uh, it does mention in here the UC Regents may try to prevent UCLA's move, but I don't believe that that's actually going to happen here. This is... This is interesting. Uh, San Diego State, I think, it, so that would be the 11th member. Typically, you would want to bring in and have like a 12th member, but it would all depend on what Amazon and ESPN or Fox or whoever ends up uh, getting these Pac-12 rights, what they want to do as far as late nights, what they want to do as far as uh, et cetera, right? There's a lot of different things here. So this Big 12 deal, while really good for the Big 12, it also may be pretty good for the Pac-12 as well. Just something to watch out for as you're going along. This is, a, this is a huge deal, and I think it marks the end of a lot of instability and a lot of uh, things that we have been unsure about, right? Like, we are finally getting to a point where we're moving into CFP expansion. Everybody's going to stand pat. We might see San Diego State move. We might see one more move, but I don't think the Big 12 is going to be adding a lot I don't think we're going to see much else, to be honest. I think, I think we're getting to a point where it's time to chill out. And that's a good thing. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.